Yo, what up? We back. Yo. What's, What's up? On? What's up? Como estas? Where's the energy? Where's the energy? Mm. Yo. Yo, you know what I realized, dog? <laughs> what you realize? Yeah, let me, you gotta, you gotta do your thing. What up, what up? Welcome to the Non Part Podcast. All right, you done. All right, you know what I realized, man? <laughs> Yo, this book, you be God is showing us, dog. He sees everything. Like, I was thinking about that earlier today. I was like, yo, dog. Like, we're, see- we're getting all the snapshots of these people's lives. But the detail about everybody, everything, what people are saying in their hearts, what people are saying in their minds. Like, yo, B, there's nothing that goes on. Like, God has no blind spots. That's, cr- yo, I'm like, and the more and more I read this book, I'm like, I'm seeing, he's allowing me to see his point of view. I'm like, yo, this thing happened thousands of years ago, but the detail, the detail that's that of, of every situation that happened, yo, exa- and it's like, while we're reading it, we're dissecting it and we're realizing like, the, yo, B, details that I missed that I've, you know, I've done read these chapters 40, 50 times. And then when I go reread it, I'm like, yo, I missed that detail, but God didn't miss it. Mm-hmm. And he pointed it out. But it's just like, you'll be this book. And you're talking about how many years of a time span of just recording a nation. But God was there. He, this is eyewitness account. This is God's eyewitness account of everything that goes on. And things that, that, he, that probably went on and he just didn't even mention. Because mm-hmm. it's just, that's not important. But... The things that he is mentioning, I'm like, yo, dog, this is, be God saw that. He saw it, B. That's mm. crazy. Mm. Nah, that's a good point. That's crazy to me, B. The all-seeing, all-knowing. That's the omnipotence. Omnipotent. Omniscient. Omnipresent. Omnipresent. Like, you know how important eyewitness account is? <laughs> like, mm. eyewitness account. Like, right. you know, you have witnesses for a case. Right. So it's like, yo, B, in this book, it's like, yo, dog, he's like, I saw that, I saw that, I saw that when he said that in his heart, and he's rev- and he he's allowing us to see that. And I'm like, like, yo, B, this is the all-knowing, all-seeing, allowing you to see exactly what he sees. Like that, I, yo, I was thinking about that Close. this morning, and I was like, yo, God has no blind spots, B. There's, like, there's nothing going on, whether it's in the spiritual realm or the physical realm. There's nothing going on in secret. <laughs> from him like dog he 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 sees it and he knows exactly what's going on so then it makes you wonder all right why does he highlight this like, right why do you say that right. why did you point that out because right. there's mm-hmm. there's something that he's trying to relate know, to us relate yeah. to us yeah no that's that's phenomenal and as you were speaking about that i was just thinking about his omnipresence and that's something we can't even fathom and you know what scripture came to mind it's it's strange i don't know like because i was just thinking about it and it came to mind as you were speaking about um, in John 3 when he was having that whole discussion in Nic- with Nicodemus. And then he was saying, yo, don't you understand this? I mean, you're the teacher. And then he said this very strange thing. He says, no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the son of man who is in heaven. So like that statement, now, as you said that he, he you're everywhere. Right. He was speaking to, he was speaking to Nicodemus right there, and then he says, "Yeah, I'm right here, but I am in heaven. I don't get it." Right, but <laughs> but was he? Yo, I have no idea. But like, as he was talking about, like, just sees everything, hears everything, right. knows everything. I was just thinking about his omnipresence, I mean, and this came to mind because I never understood it. And I just think whatever. I just I'm like I wrestle with it, and I I may not understand it until we see him. Mm-hmm. They're a triune God, right? Mm-hmm. So, just because you know they they have their individual you know persons, you know, even if God the Father is in heaven, the God part of Jesus could have been in heaven at the same time, even That's, though he was physically man. The man well, uh, well, was on earth, you know, but he Emmanuel, was 100% God. Emmanuel, but, God with us. God with us. So, mm-hmm. so for that period, you know, that thirty-three year period, I'm wondering if he put those things aside yeah i believe he did right now he became a local god i believe he did so i think Mm -hmm. uh, that was part of why what he did was so big 
because yeah. of what he gave up, right? right? Mm. Uh, temporarily, if you want to no, say it like that, mm. right? He set yeah. aside these things and he lived fully man. So mm. that, in order to be like that, you have to be local. Yeah. So no, you was that. here and that's mm. where you were. Bound right? by physics. Bound by physics, by, bound by Time. these laws. But... but your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit was on a next level. That's why it says, no, but that's a, one of my favorite scriptures. It says, Jesus who offered himself to the Father through the Holy Spirit. Like mm -hmm. he had to totally depend on the Holy Spirit while he was down here. The mm -hmm. human part, right? The hum But what about the God part of him? The God part was um, indwelling in the flesh, the human flesh. I, then, then that's gonna go down another rabbit hole, and that's not the rabbit hole. Yo, B, why every time I bring something up, these two? No, I'm not gonna. Go like no, but it's no, like I it's, mean, we went through it. In yeah, time. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's a yeah. like, and and I say that I'm glad you said that. Like, why would you highlight certain things? Yeah. It's like like what we were speaking before. It's like every time he, because we're going through these men, the lives of these men who are supposed to carry on this seed, and now they, you know, each time they have to get a wife. So that you can, you know, have a child and carry on the seed. And yeah. you're seeing like every interaction, it don't describe the man, you know, but it describes the beauty of the woman. Mm. You know, it's like with Sarah, yo, Sarah was beautiful. Sarah was beautiful. Rebecca, Rebecca was beautiful. And that, to me, I'm just like, but you'd never, I'm like, how did Abraham look? You know, how did Isaac look? How did Jacob look? To the point where even where we had that conversation about arranged marriages, Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it, it it blows me away that Rebecca trusted the Lord so much that, you know, okay, this is of the Lord. All right, I'm going to go back. Mm -hmm. Never seeing Isaac, you know, never mm -hmm. seeing, um um you know, like, yeah. you know, never seeing her, 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 her husband, but she trusted God. But just how the, the Holy Spirit always highlights the beauty of the woman, you know? So mm -hmm. what, what are the messages, like, as we look at how God arranged these things? What could we get from God's perspective and what he's highlighting? And I, I know a couple of episodes back, I spoke about the effects that the beautiful, the women that were named, that were beautiful and the effects it had. And we saw the contrast with, you know, with Isaac and, and Rebecca. So mm -hmm. now we're seeing this Jacob and Leah story right. and you bring it up, right? The uh, Leah got described, mm -hmm. Rachel got described. We don't know how Jacob looked. You know, we could assume, all right, these guys were industrious. They worked with their hands. Right. So they was probably in shape, guys, but physically attractive, right? right? I don't think up to this point, we've gotten, we haven't gotten any description of how a guy looked physically, mm -hmm. right? But as we're reading, we see what's important to God, right? Right. We see that God <clears throat> um, is focused on the character. God is focused on... Um, not the outside, but the inside, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I'm, I'm going to kind of bring it out to, let's say, application. How would that app apply to our lives? How does it apply to your experiences, right? If we got two single men over here, how does, how does that apply in your life? Like, how does that play out? Or what have you observed? Or what have you seen with how Christian men and Christian women interact in 2021? Um, I don't know. It's a difficult question because I, the more mature I get in my walk in Christ, the 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 physical beauty in a person weighs a lot less in my you know decision to court them, my decision to marry them. Um, here, you know, in the Old Testament, what we've been reading, it seems like. You know, they elevated, you know, most of the women describing them as beautiful, which seemed to be important here. Um, and like Mike has been saying, the, the man was never described as if these women, that wasn't what they were looking for. They were looking for someone to be to provide for them, someone to care for them, to protect them. And I think nowadays, you know, just from my experience, and I could be wrong, but my days, I mean, nowadays, Christian women are more, you know, focused on, you know, physical along with the other aspects. They want like everything. And I think it's, it's the generation we live in. 
there's so many options when you go on a dating site you know someone who let's just say you know before online dating someone who would have been a great catch for you that lived in your neighborhood in a small town now that person is not good enough because you have so many options of men living in other states in other countries you know mm-hmm. and and someone's always looking for the next thing that could be better and they worried mm-hmm. about missing out on something when something so beautiful is right in front of you but you're like nah I'm going to wait it out cuz I could do better mm-hmm. you know that's not God's best for me how do you know that how do you know it's not God's best you talk to the dude have you went out on a few dates have you have you listened to his heart you know so I think nowadays as as single Christians we, we, and I'll throw myself in it, we're looking for too much, you know, when, and when God is like, yo, just, I put this together, I'm going to work out and, and you guys are going to glorify me in the marriage instead of looking for different traits to, before you get into that. So, I mean, that's just my experience. Yeah. No, I, I take God's perspective, like, like, it's like what Ann said, like, you know, before you were saved, you had all your priorities. You had what you wanted, you know, you or what you thought was beauty. And as you start to read the word of God, it's like, I think the scripture that I read was Sarah. You know, it blew me away because the way God presented her was, it wasn't because of the adorning of her hair and of her, you know, that wasn't what made her. Yes, she was beautiful, but what God was focusing on was the spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that is, I think about priorities as when you are picking somebody or when you want to be with somebody, what is your priorities? You know, and everybody has different priorities and everybody could be different. Like, it's not to say, like, I think Marcus mentioned it. It's not to say that you are not supposed to be with somebody who's beautiful because the scripture says it, it points it out that Sarah was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Rebecca was beautiful. Rachel was beautiful. So it's not, it's not going away from that pertaining as a man you know looking for a woman but you know like i said that scripture with uh, describing sarah was so important that you know she was humble she was modest she had character you saw it with even with eliezer when eliezer was like yo let me see which woman it's gonna be it says that rebecca was beautiful but that's not the test he gave her he didn't give her a beauty test right. it was like let me see her character so there's so many things that plays part parts in it but i think as individuals we just have to have our priorities. And I don't think God I don't think God faults us for that. You know, if you want somebody tall, okay, yeah, you could want somebody tall. If you want somebody short or thick or, or slim, but like I think what well, Andrew's saying, you can't have everything. You know, what are your priorities? You know, what is priority to you? Is it does she does she have to love the Lord? Is she does she has to be somebody who is in her word that knows the word? If that's a priority for you, then put that in the priority. But she might lack somewhere else or he might lack somewhere else. And you got to be be ready to deal with that, you know, but it's like people want everything because, again, people see everything. You see everything. So now it's like, I want this. I want that. I want this. And now you want this whole mesh of who it is. But I think pertaining as far as man and woman, there's a reason why the Lord points out the beauty when it comes to the woman. You know, I think that matters even to the Lord, or he probably sees that that matters to a man to the Lord. And he points that out. You think so? Yeah, why not? Why Why not mention it? Why I mean, mention it? Why mention it with Sarah? Why mention it with Rebecca? Why mention it with, with, with Rachel? I mean, it's the way I, we're I, created, right? right? I don't we're think, wired. Right, I don't think it's, I think he understands as men, like, you know, as men, when you're looking for a spouse, like, beauty is something that, that, that you might, make a priority so i agree now is that a good thing or is that a bad thing i think it's a neutral thing. yeah i don't think yeah yeah. when you elevate it to the point where that's the most important thing and that's the only thing okay you know what i'm saying that's what i mean even paul talks about that and that's why i said like with sarah they mentioned sarah was beautiful but when you go into the new testament the lord is like yeah but she had character you understand so i think it's again if you elevate that like how we was reading with jacob you moved totally because she was beautiful. You didn't even right. know nothing about her right. character. No, so so with, with those cool. things, when the beauty came, we saw what it came with. It created conflict. Mm-hmm. The beauty wasn't, like, that wasn't the reason why they got married, why Abraham and Sarah. Because we don't know mm-hmm. how 
they got married. Right, right, we right, meet right. Abraham, he's already married. Mm -hmm. But when beauty popped up, it was drama. It was drama, right? Right, right. right, right. Um, the same, same thing with uh, Isaac and Rebecca. Rebecca, right? Beauty popped up twice, mm -hmm. but the test wasn't about beauty, right? right? When the servant saw her, he wasn't like, "Oh, she's the one." He was like, "Nah." Right. It mentioned that after, oh, and she was beautiful. That's that's a plus plus. Right. But right. later on, her beauty also Caused created a conflict. conflict. Right. Right. So now, you know, as we read, I was going through last week. Now we're seeing an instance where. Jacob, this character, we've kind of been fleshing out who mm -hmm. he is, how he sees things, and we see that he's being driven, right? He sees this beautiful woman, love at first sight. Now he's being driven by that, this love that he has, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, the situation happened with Laban, manipulation, and Rachel also has a sister that's in contrast to her. Rachel was beautiful. Leah was not attractive. She was not an attractive woman, right? right? Um, and obviously, Jacob gets tricked by Laban, mm -hmm. and we kind of end the chapter where she she was unloved, right? Right, and then now that she's there's something she's married, right? And we all agree that yo know, this marriage now you're married, yeah you got tricked. You know, it's a usurper, usurper. The whole situation is bad. We're reading about dysfunctional people, dysfunctional families, deception, greed, all of that is all in there. Dynasty, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dallas, whatever it's old a soap show. Opera. Soap opera. Soap wanna, opera. Yeah. Pair, pair yeah. Young and the Day, Days yeah. of our lives. <laughs> Just craziness is happening. Right. Mm -hmm. But I like the fact that, you know, it focuses on her how she was feeling in her situation yeah. and then the lord steps in right regardless whether she knows or not right as we talk about these are people's lives mm -hmm. you know the holy spirit points out that the lord opened up her womb right right it says she was unloved so now he opened up her womb and you know i see a picture of him loving her right and trying to fill this like i could fill this void Right, I could pay attention to you. I'm hearing your prayers, and every time she has a kid, she's hoping that, you know. Obviously, we know the importance of male children was in that culture. Right. She's hoping that her having a child would um, gain the love of her husband. Right, I just see a picture of her in a very painful marriage, but God notices it, right? And she is the the mother of judah and levi like god just steps in so how she looked didn't matter to god of course not. right right but to jacob obviously right. you'll be i didn't I, to the point where he didn't love her yeah like he was he wasn't even um he couldn't even move himself to fulfill his role in a marriage and love his wife because number one he was tricked i get that and number two i think he wasn't attracted to her physically mm-hmm but God stepped in and dealt with her. Right. So are you saying that men should not? No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> okay. So now what? Nah, he's, not, he's not saying that. He's okay, just, I, sure. I get what he's saying. Like to God, again, like I no, said, yes, with so Sarah, to God, right. like it points out Sarah's beauty, but to God, God understood what was the priority. The, the priority. It goes back right. to what you said, right? The priority. The priority. God right. is spirit. Right. So yeah. he's dealing with these higher things, right? right? You know, Paul says, walk in the spirit. The spirit yeah. should be higher than the flesh. Correct. The spirit, all those, those are the things that's going to translate mm -hmm. over there. And yeah, we're spiritual and physical beings. Mm -hmm. And we have senses, eyes, smell. You want somebody that smells nice, you want, right? But it has to be, like you said, it has to be... Um, in its proper place. Right. That's what I'm Especially saying. when you're looking for a spouse, somebody that you're going to be joined with right. for the rest of your life to make a, a covenant with. One of the most important decisions as a man or as a woman that right. you're going to make. Right. I think the message of God is it shouldn't be about the physical because the physical is going to change. Yeah, definitely. It's going to get old. It's mm -hmm. going to get wrinkly. It might um, get damaged. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So again, if if you're if you're kind of being led how 
Jacob, Jacob was, was right, right, right. you're mm-hmm. not going to love that person. Yeah. Let's say, God forbid, you meet somebody and they get into an accident and then now right. they're in a wheelchair. Right. Now they can't use those beautiful legs that you was attracted to. Right. So now what are you going to do? Yeah. Are you still going to love them the same way? But you can't break the spirit. Right. If, if you understand. So no, listen, no, it's, totally it's not that. about, listen, we, we have eyes. We get attracted to things, but that should never be the catalyst or you gonna end up working for fourteen years? Yes. Yeah. So, so and of, get bitter. Some <laughs> of us sort of equate God's best with God's with the most attractive people. You know what I mean? And I, I when you read this, I think God's best for Jacob was Leah. You know what I mean? Because we see what you know happens later on with Rachel. That's a good. Point. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, that God gave him the the best for him. He could have said, you know what, I'm I'm happy with Leah, and this is gonna be my wife. Right and, and, right and left, yeah, and and that was it. So that yeah. could have been right. it, you know what I mean. But he went on and, and worked another seven for Rachel, who he loved, and we see the kind of person she was. She was a thief, <laughs> you know. She right. believed in false gods, you know. So that wasn't God's best for him, right? And it causes it caused conflict, yeah, in the right. family, yeah. right. further conflict, mm-hmm. right? You got some rough? No, I was um. So you saying most Christians are ugly? <laughs> Nah, <laughs> yo, you was telling all the ugly people to stay inside their house. You see, Listen. see how you brought that back up, and I did. You, you set me up, just dog. I didn't ago. say that, dog. I didn't say that. I'm king ugly, dog. Listen, so most, ain't all, all Christians are beautiful because they got the Holy Spirit, <laughs> <laughs> they, but their eyes are weak. Oh yeah, droopy eyes and everything. <laughs> okay, like I got a quick verse on what you guys are saying. Proverbs thirty-one thirty when he says, um, "Charm." Is deceitful and beauty is passing, mm. but a woman who fears the Lord shall, um, sh- she shall be praised. Right. So you see right here when he talks exactly to the point you were making in terms that beauty will pass if you get you know injured or anything like yeah. that happens. You know um, that beauty will pass, but one who fears the Lord is the spiritual. That's the most important thing, yeah. and and I think that tends to I think that befalls a lot of men where we look at the beauty first, and then right. you know what that clouds the judgment on how right. we date and evaluate the spiritual aspect. Right. Because I see some young folks and I talk to a lot of young folks about how they caught and how they date. It's like once they said see the beauty, they get, you know, uh captivated by it. And then then their conversation, their courting goes like, Oh, what's your favorite color? Oh, what's your favorite song? Oh, and like you don't get into the deeper things and understanding the person's character and their, you know, their spiritual walk with Christ because you've been so captivated by the beauty and now that totally clouds your judgment on how you supposed to court and get to know someone properly to see how their walk is with the Lord. Mm-hmm. What is, you know, how would they deal in certain situations so that if you do get into this marriage, that is going to be a productive marriage for the sanctification of both of you. Right. Amen. Yeah, yeah man. And you, you're not going to be able to court somebody, get to know somebody properly if... 95% of the time you restrain yourself from wanting to smash. Right. That becomes mm-hmm. a problem. Right. right? Mm-hmm. So now this attraction that's uncontrollable and you know it 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 cloud like you said it clouds your judgment. Right. So the, and the smashing actually clouds your judgment which is why God you know if we're doing it God's way without, you know, sex it doesn't cloud your judgment though. You get to know the person and it's just a beautiful way you know, because there are beautiful people that I've dated that get ugly real quick when you listen to how they speak. You listen to how they care about people. Right. But if you if if you were like sleeping with them, that's what I I agree with you saying. That's when you get the the judgment gets cloudy and you overlook yeah. those characteristics, those flaws that you wouldn't want in a spouse. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, and just a quick little thing. I mean, um, people really don't understand how important that is: restraining and keeping pure. Cause like, I mean, that's something I struggled with and, um, and like I pray through and the Lord is constantly sanctifying me knowing that I came from a past of like multiple women, you know, being a whore manga and like, you know, fornication and all that. And now getting saved and now married. And it's like all those women, the images are still in your mind. Mm. So now I'm here, I'm supposed to be loving my wife. I'm, you know, all into her. But you still have images and thoughts, or even worse is like when you get into an argument, beginning of marriage. I'm like, it was it was such a rocky road the beginning of marriage. It's like immediately you get into uh, an argument or or you know some type of difference of opinion or what have you, and then you start. Oh, I remember when I was with 
you know, shorty, you know, back then, you know, th- that would have never came up. Mm. And then now you start, you start this com- com- comparison and contrasting in your mind and that will inhibit your relationship that you have to your wife. Mm. And that's something that got to be taken to the Lord. Amen. Like that's Amen. a struggle that you got to deal with, with the Lord, yeah. you know, to prevent it from corrupting your marriage. It's like what the scripture says, you got to take the thoughts captive. That's right. You know, so it's, it's not even just about the old things. It's about new things. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, you walking down the street, you whatever. And like you said, those things will come into your mind. The enemy will attack your mind, but you know, you got to rely on the word of God where it says you got to take the thought captive. Right. So now let's jump into this situation. Um, so now uh, Leah has four four sons. She bore four sons for Jacob. Now she's unloved. So let's go from 1 to 13. Now when Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said to Jacob, Give me children or else I die. And Jacob's anger was aroused against Rachel. And he said, Am I in the place of God? who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb. So she said, Here is my maid Bilhah. Go into her, and she will bear a child on my knees, that I also may have children by her. Then she gave him Bilhah, her maid, as wife, and Jacob went into her. And Bilhah conceived and bore Jacob a son. Then Rachel said, God has judged my case, and he has also heard my voice and given me a son. Therefore she called his name Dan. And Rachel's maid Bilhah conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. Then Rachel said, With great wrestlings I have wrestled with my sister, and indeed I have prevailed. So she called his name Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had stopped bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her to Jacob as wife. And Leah's maid Zilpah bore Jacob a son. Then Leah said, A troop comes. So she called his name Gad. And Leah's maid Zilpah bore Jacob a second son. Then Leah said, I am happy, for the daughters will call me blessed. So she called his name Asher. Mm-hmm. Um, what's, what's going on? Rachel's, she's, she's angry. And she's, her anger is directed toward her, her husband when it's obviously not him. Yeah. You know, because he's, he's working, his little men are working. And the crazy thing about it is Leah, you know, Rachel, Rachel being beautiful, Leah didn't envy her sister's beauty, but Rachel envied Leah for bearing children. Hmm. And who opened up her womb? The Lord. And again, like you seeing that, you know, with all that beauty, you couldn't bear children. Mm. And in that society at the time, you know, you're talking about that was, you know, priority. For right. a man to have children, and not only is she bearing them children, she bearing them males, men. Mm, yeah, yep. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Again, this is according to the promise of carrying the seed, being fruitful, being mo- multiplying, and Leah is just providing him son after son after son after son, and you you seeing that? You know, I realized that like Leah didn't envy Rachel, even though Rachel was beautiful, but Rachel envied Leah, so it's like. Like you, it's, it's like what you were saying. Um, even though Rachel was beautiful, what Leah received from the Lord was the better part. That was in society, you, you would be considered more beautiful because you was bearing fruitful. this man. You was fruitful. Right. You was bearing this man children. Yeah. So I'm thinking about um, Leah kind of being thrust into this situation. Um, lab- I, again, going back. Laban was manipulating the situation and he was able to get more time out mm-hmm. of this guy. Mm-hmm. Cause later on he's gonna kinda say, Yo, yo, when you're over here, I'm getting blessed. Cause mm-hmm. Laban is a sneaky guy. Like he's he's really sneaky. So he, he kind of thrust her into this whole situation. Um and and um she suffered in the marriage, she was unloved, but the Lord, you know, stepped in. But now we're seeing um Rachel, she can't have kids. She's seeing her sister have kids. And now we see envy, right? Jealousy. These things are starting to brew up, right? Mm-hmm. And she, words like envied and, and um, the first verse, and then it speaks about this wrestling, right? It's like she's competing. Now we have this new si- sibling rivalry mm-hmm. between the two sisters, which I think probably 
was around from before because one was pretty and one was not. Mm. And she probably, what, what do you call that? Uh, pretty, the pretty girl. Uh, pretty privilege. Pretty, pretty privilege. Pri- yeah, pretty pl- privilege. <laughs> yeah, pretty privilege. So Rachel probably had the pretty privilege, uh. right? And there was always this. So now you're in a situation where your sister has the advantage over you, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Mm. And you didn't go to the God, right? Rachel didn't go to God. No. Um, so I'm wondering how much was Jacob pouring into her or did he have anything to pour into her to, mm. to teach her and, and build her relationship with God? So that's one question. Um, it, it got to the point where she got mad at her husband. Yeah. She started nagging him. Yep. Yeah. Mm. That's, that's how the seed that just started growing in her of envy and jealousy of anger to the point where she attacked him to the point where Mr. Rock lifter, I'm so in love <laughs> with you. <laughs> I'm gonna lift the rock. Mm-hmm. Now you're mad at her, right? You understand what I'm saying? So now right. you get the picture, like yo, this is something that was going on for a while. Like yo, mm-hmm. sure, what you want me to do? Right. So and you see that he he worked 14 years for her, so he was madly in love with her. But now you're mad at her. Now you're mad at her. <laughs> you can't deal with her. I you're mean, like, he you're acted. A nagger. I mean, his he acted. His grandfather went through the same thing. Remember Abraham and Sarah. When, after a while, Sarah came to Abraham. Abraham, what you want me to do? <laughs> but you know what? But Abraham didn't say he I was, was mad. At I was going to say it never right. said that he was mad. At nah, right, was right, mad right. At no, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'm I'm looking at the simul the situation is you know it's the same. Yeah. Right, you know the woman coming to you like you, you know help me out. This is her husband. Like right. she's coming to him like you got to do something. You see me over here, I'm dying. You know that's why she was like bear me children or I'ma die. Like right. you see where I'm at with this. Like do something, interfere, and then you just see Jacob. You know, switch up. Now the beauty don't mean anything. The beauty, the beauty <laughs> couldn't bear you children. Now, you're no, right. but it, it's that. But you see, you see the character, Rachel. How Rachel is dealing with this. Right. You're seeing the true, true character, character the tr- right. and you're like, like you said, the beauty starts to fade. Right. Because now you're starting to see, right? Quick. You're starting to yeah. see this you character, ugly. and you're like, oh, yeah. yo. Yo, why are you pressing me? Like the Lord opened Le- Leah's womb. You know what I mean? That's like he. That's why he's like, do I control it? I'm yeah, not the Lord. You're putting that burden yeah. on me, yeah. right? And and you know it's 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 great that you said that because this whole showing you that it's driven by emotions and it wasn't d- driven by truth. Because he's like Jacob's anger aroused at first. He was madly in love, stricken by her, and now your anger is around. So showing you that yo, that beauty. mad loving one day and then hate you the other day. Where you don't see the true consistency of that true love, like you guys would mention early, right. was that really true love, right. or was it just this romanticized butterfly in my belly? Love at yeah, first sight. I mean, you could be at angry at somebody that you love. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not all, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not expecting to get married and for it. Oh, my bad. Look, <laughs> and edit that. For that, <laughs> for that to be. You know, just a beautiful marriage from day one till, the, till we die. There's gonna yeah, be yeah. arguments. There's yeah, gonna be yeah. times where people. No, you're get right, hate, right? So yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want to take. Anything I'm not saying that he away. didn't love her. Yeah, that's Nobody's what I, I don't want to take that. away from the fact that he didn't love her. But you know, remember, we it's not always gonna be perfect. It's Ex- gonna be, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, point yeah, we're right, bringing yeah. up. Yeah, that's the point we're bringing up because before it was like, dog, madly in love. That's all you heard. Like, yo, I'm madly yeah. in love. I'm. I'll work another seven years. Or you know, and now. When that goes away and the real comes, yeah. now you're starting to see this. Yo, yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't got no children. I'm about to die. Yo, what you want me to? Yeah, you that, start that, to see the beauty you, don't mean nothing. Now you start point. to see marriage. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you you said it right. In Abraham's situation, he didn't say that. He yeah. kind of was like, right, "Do whatever you want." But it, the scripture doesn't say that he was mad at her. Mm, and I right. think the the point that Ralph is bringing up is this emotional this emotional surface level. Yeah. Um, thing yeah right? right and we saw what was driving jacob in the same way emotions the same way circumstances could drive you to right your vision mm-hmm. you know, i love this woman and i'm lifting rocks and i'm working seven years is the same the same <laughs> way it goes to the other extreme right. Right. where not saying he doesn't love her but because of circumstances because of um environmentals because of emotions yo it says right Jacob's anger was aroused. So the only reason when the scripture says it, it's highlighting something. Right. And I'm contrasting like, yo, just you worked 14 years. You, you, it's but the you, pendulum just swings. And, and not saying that he didn't love her or 
relationships you don't get right. angry or aroused. But yeah, yeah. It's just the contrast and how. But that, what's so dope too is that because we just said it with Abraham, we never heard that he was had that anger, right? right? But never. how was Abraham's relationship with God? Right. Compared to Jacob's right. relationship exactly. with God, right. you know what I mean. So yeah. when women, when you're looking at, you know, courting someone or getting married, the first thing you need to look at is their relationship with God, mm-hmm. you know. And the right. closer that he is to God, you know, like Abraham was gonna do something completely irrational, like kill his own son because God said so, mm. you know. So that relationship was tight, you know. So that's what they should be looking at, right. you know, to avoid it, these anger arousals. So. <laughs> Jacob's pops, when his wife couldn't have kids, he, he prayed, prayed for 20 prayed years. For yep. It doesn't yeah. say anything about Jacob praying. He yeah. snapped at her. Yeah. Right. And do you know why he snapped at her? He got four shorties. Oh. <laughs> I mean, he's already in a bad situation where you got four wives. Mm. He came in for Dolo. Yo, Isaac had Rebecca. Yo, my Rebecca needs children. We're going to pray. Abraham, yo, we're going to pray. We're going to deal with this. Yo, this dude say, yo. You don't have kids, but you know what? Leah's popping kids. Right up. Zilpa's popping kids. Right up. Bill has popping kids. Right up. So it's still on you. That's why it's like, it's more like, he's like, right, he's looking at it like, dog, that's not my problem. <laughs> like, you'll be, I don't control that. Like, right. that, you know, that, and that's like the attitude he have. But again, we're seeing the contrast from, you know, butterflies to real, the, the real. When the, the, the real. When, yeah. So we got Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, right? We got Dan. We got Naphtali. What we read up to? 15, 14, 13? Yeah, we read up to 13. Naphtali, Gad, 13. Asher. Asher. So we got, we got, damn, I miscount. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Ruben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, uh, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher. Mm-hmm. So we got eight. We got eight of the tribes, eight mm-hmm. of the patriarchal tribe. Of the nation of Israel, popping. So let's let's go from. Oh, one one quick thing. Um, like with this whole uh the handmaidens, yeah. Like that whole surrogacy thing. You know, it was started by um. Have you you guys ever heard of the Hammurabi Code, King yeah. Hammurabi? Yeah. yeah, King Hammurabi, which was in we we actually read about him in Genesis fourteen. His action was Amraphel. So, but secular history shows that he's the one with the whole Hammurabi Code. That came up with this whole surrogacy thing, like yo, women that are cannot have children, they could bear through their handmaidens. Mm-hmm. So this is why we see such a common thing that this was something that was started through Amraphel from Genesis fourteen. Right. Mm-hmm. So definitely part of the culture, pagan culture. Yeah, the pagan culture. And we're we're seeing how the pagan culture is part of these people that were taken. Like yeah, it's being removed, removed from, from that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still very much a part of them. We're we're seeing the the birth of a nation, the infancy stages. Mm-hmm. Verse um, 14. So let's go 14 to... 24? Yeah. Whatever. Now Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, please give me some of your son's mandrakes. But she said to her, is it a small matter that you have taken away my husband? Would you take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, therefore... He will lie with you tonight for your son's mandrakes. When Jacob came out of the field in the evening, Leah went out to meet him and said, You must come in to me, for I have surely hired you with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And God listened to Leah, and she conceived and bore Jacob a fifth son. Leah said, God has given me my wages because I have given my maid to my husband. So she called his name Issachar. Then Leah conceived again and bore Jacob a sixth son. And Leah said, God has endowed me with a good endowment. Now my husband will dwell with me because I have borne him six sons. So she called his name Zebulun. Afterward, she bore a daughter and called her name Dinah. Then God remembered Rachel and God listened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bore a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. So she called his name Joseph. And said, the Lord shall add to me another son. It's a lot of of, of of kids popping up. A lot of smashing going on from my boy. (laughs) (laughs) You know, he's like, ah, you got to come with me tonight. You got to come with me tonight. No, 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 no. Yo, that's crazy, bro. You think it's a lot of smashing or just the Lord... 
being opening wombs. Nah, they smashing though. No, I mean they is smashing, but I'm like Abraham. Now, you don't think Abraham was smashing Sarah? But I'm looking at it more as I'm seeing the Lord. He is in charge of conception. He is in charge of opening the wombs. You know, because you had you had women before, like Rebecca. She was barren twenty years. You don't think Isaac was smashing? There was a lot of smashing going on. But what I'm seeing here is like you'll be the Lord is in control. You know, so like, so this guy, he's laying with these women and they, you'll be, he, they're, be they're, they're being fruitful because we just read two situations where his grandfather and his father, it wasn't that fruitful. You know, it was hard, but we're seeing this guy being fruitful and I just see the Lord's hand. He's in control of conception. He's yeah. in control of childbirth. He's in control of all of that. When a human yeah. being comes into this world, that is the Lord's doing. Amen. No, I was just going to say, like, one of the things that, that stood out to me is that with Leah, um, when she mentions that, she said, like, God listened to her. And he says, yo, thank the Lord or God has given me. She's actually using, you know, the Lord's name. You know, this is Jehovah God. So you see that, like, whatever limited capacity that she had, she was giving the credit and praise to Jehovah. And towards when you see when... um. When Rachel says, oh, God has, you know, has taken my reproach, um, she's using the more generic, like El, Elohim. It was a more generic thing. So you see there's a de that disconnect with Rachel while Leah is actually using Jehovah's name, so whatever Leah, capacity she had. Leah possibly had a deeper relationship right. with God, more more personal, more deep. Mm. So, so there's a situation, I think, possibly that the scripture is probably silent on something happened where it seems like Jacob wasn't dealing with Leah. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. she said, you took away my husband. Right. So obviously, you know, Leah probably manipulated the situation and told Jacob, leave her alone. Like don't even sleep with her. Yeah. Rachel. You mean Rachel yeah, manipulated Ra the situation. Yeah. yeah. Rachel. Dude. You think it was that? I think it was. I think Jacob ain't love her, but he was laying with her before. Yeah, she yeah. was having kids, but now it got to the point where he's like, "Yo, you took away my husband. You took. You even took that away." Okay. He wasn't. He wasn't loving me, but he was still laying because I had four kids. Right. right. Yeah. Did those kids come before he married Rachel or no? Because, I mean, he was married to her for seven years first, right? No, no, no. They both yeah. was married. After the seven years, remember, he gave Rachel, but he just had to work had seven years. Yeah. Additional, yeah. No, but what I'm saying, the first seven, he was married to Leah, right? No. The first seven, no, he, he wasn't worked. married to nobody. I think he worked. Yes. Then it was the trickery of the marriage yeah. ceremony. And then and he married then Rachel. He got Rachel, and then he had to and work he had another to work seven, seven years. But during so the he, seven so years that he was working, oh, he didn't get he didn't get Leah first? Well, he got Leah first. After the he, seven. Right. He got yeah, the Yeah, but what I'm saying is during the seven where it was just him and Leah, were there children mm -hmm. born there? No. No, there was no seven when he was with... He worked seven years. He wasn't married to anybody. Then he got Leah tricked. Then he got tricked and got Leah. So he and he married. was like, yo, why'd you do this to me? And then Laban was like, ha ha, my bad. Yeah, so he I'll was married Rachel. to Leah for seven years no, while no, he, no. Was he was working like, for no, Rachel. No. No. I'll give you Rachel Yeah. and you work for another seven, seven years. years. So he got so, them at the pretty much at the same it's like time. Close. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He he smashed her in the tent. Yeah. They were married. Yeah. At that point. And he then, said, Complete your week. Then complete your week of marriage, right? Because it was a ceremony. Yeah. He was like, finish that, and then I'm gonna give you Rachel. Right? Yeah, yeah. For, for another seven to get Rachel. He no, had to no, work. You'll get Rachel. Wait a minute. Why why am I so confused about this, bro? What is it? <laughs> read read uh twenty nine of what? Yeah. Verse, chapter 29. Yeah, chapter 29, verse 27. 27? So, here, he, 28, right? Yeah, so, he says, said... And Jacob uh, did so and fulfilled her week. Oh, Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. So, he gave him his daughter, Rachel, as wife also. Okay. So, he got both after the set, first seven, but he had to work for another Rachel seven. another seven. Yeah. So, when he said fulfill the week, the week was the... Marriage ceremony, right? Because right? the, the ceremony usually lasted like seven days of celebrating. So he was like, yo, listen, continue with this marriage. Because it was almost like Jacob was like, yo, I'm not down with this. I'm leaving, right? I'm not going to complete so this I see marriage. What you're, so you're saying after the seven years. He got both wives. He, he got should, both. Yes. He got both of them? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. But he had to work. 
He had, he had to work there. an additional seven. He had to work an additional seven to for pay. Rachel to pay so, for Rachel. Right to pay for Rachel. Right, because you know you had to pay the dowry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he yeah, ain't yeah. have no money, so he had to work it off. So it's not like he was with Leia for seven while he was working, and then at the end of the f- the seven, which would be fourteen, right. he got Rachel. Yeah, right, it didn't. That's happen. what I. Yeah, nah, it didn't. Happen. So when he wrong. said, "Fulfill your week," he was like, "Yo, finish. Let's finish this. Let's complete this marriage right. yeah. with Leia, and then I'm gonna give you Rachel. And then I'm gonna give you Rachel. But we're not. You're gonna have to stay another seven. But you years have to stay another. Right. Day. So right. it was, you know, maybe within a month, he was married to both of them. Right. Right. That's it. That's what happened. Okay, and and out of this came that law in Deuteronomy 18 where he says you sh- cannot marry sisters like at the same time. Okay, that's where this that's where the law came from for this. I I I have a feeling. Oh, you can't marry sisters. <laughs> yeah, I at the same time. Oh, good to know. I didn't know. Well, that. I mean, so you I know. won't go out and marry sisters. So so yeah, that the reason I'm saying that is because of what she said, right? And then she came to him and be like, "No, I hired you." So you have to come later. Yeah, that's crazy. So I get a picture that, you know, Rachel did some conniving manipulation and kind of kept Jacob physically away from um, uh, Leah. Leah. So I don't think it was too hard, though, because he wasn't feeling Leah. It was hard on her. No, I meant it wasn't hard for Rachel to manipulate. Oh, yeah. It was yeah, more yeah, like, babe, just yeah. you're staying with me forever now. <laughs> Your mind. <laughs> Come on, baby. But Sweet cheeks. She's not, you know, right? She's unable to produce. She's unable to have kids. So now Ruben found this. Mandrakes. Mandrakes, which I guess is supposed to be some type of aphrodisiac. Mm-hmm. I heard it helped them conceive, apparently. That's right. what they thought. So, um, so, you know, Leia leveraged that. Like, all right, right. you want this? No, oh, uh, so now, you know, Jacob has to come. Like, kill this, whatever you got going on, kill that. I want to be with my husband. So now when he goes, she, yo, I just hired you. You got to come with me. Right. Boom, she's conceiving more. Right. Right? And imagine how Rachel, Rachel. felt. Because <laughs> I think that got her to the point where she started calling on to God. Yo, Jacob. <laughs> yeah, me. this guy was yeah. a thief. And all he does now is work for people. Where he even working for his wives. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you know what's you know what's crazy <laughs> to see how bad and corrupt. Like uh, we already see that how yeah. um he Jacob comes from a family of like uh, competition and division, right between him and Esau mm. father. And now here he goes in his family that he has. It's the same thing. Now he got two wives, competition amongst them, and. And you know this is so you the see younger just, struggling with the, you see the, the older yeah, yeah the you same see the, thing the, the continuation cycle. the cycle of like you know just repetitive sin and like this um, bondage to it and it's so bad because now you have the son he's probably Ruben uh, probably seven years old around that time you know around that age he's even involved in the competition yo yo look mom. I got you some aphrodisiac so you could drop some more kids for like you know what I'm saying? The son is even involved in this. Yeah, the kids getting pulled in. Mm. Kids getting pulled in. So so Leah has a total of six six boys and and Dinah. Mm-hmm. So seven kids. Yeah. Um Rachel has zero at this time, but her handmaiden had a couple, right? Yeah. Can't can't keep track of these kids. <laughs> <laughs> but um but they, so so they were important. So in, in twenty four it says God remembered Rachel and God listened to her and opened up her room. So I'm I'm seeing all these events, right? She's seeing all of this. Years are passing by. You got the mandrakes. Those probably didn't even work. <laughs> of course not, because then that would have got the glory. Cause you mm, got listen, God, right. when you got the you, <laughs> when you got the mandrake. Right. And Jacob went to Leah. She got- she popped like <laughs> three more out. Yeah, and yeah. that's time. And but you're talking about at least three, four years. Right, crazy. You ate. You probably was busting the mandrakes in your veins. <laughs> <laughs> IV mandrakes. IV mandrakes. IV drips. Sniffing dried mandrakes. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> yeah, what is wrong with this guy? Rolling mandrakes. <laughs> Rolling the, the magic, smoking the magic. You can't, you can't do it in your own power, baby. <laughs> you, probably, you can't do it. You probably had him in the bag. Like every time you walked him out, what y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> you you, you, you dried the mandrakes up. You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
rubbing it on the gums. Like rubbing it on the gums. You take you rub it on your gums. Yeah, she was cracked out on <laughs> MJ, bro. <laughs> Probably you soaked it in the tub, B. You probably just soaked it, soak it in there. You probably dog. like take a bucket oh. put the water on that. <laughs> nothing. You ain't getting nothing. Yum, it yum. did not work. Yum, 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 But you know what worked? <laughs> you know what worked? When you called on the Lord. Oh, that's right. That's, that's and it, he man. heard oh. you. And that's why that's what, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, that's I'm right. seeing a, yeah. God, you know, his providence again. He's yeah. the one who's in control of conception. You know, you could try everything you want. You could go see all the doctors you want. You could try. You could sniff all the mandrakes. You want. <laughs> <laughs> but it's God that opens a womb. Yeah. So that's where your faith has to be. You know, it's just encouragement. If you're trying to have mm-hmm. children, be. It's God who's in full total. That's what I see. He's in yeah. full total control. So you have to give it all to him because he's in control of that. And God Amen. is not a respecter of persons. Right. right. So if this is how he um, relates to them back then, mm. and he hears prayers and open up wounds, Fast. he's the same God today. Yep. He did it with Isaac That's it. and Rebecca. That's it. He's the he same did it. God. He did it with Abraham and Sarah, and he's doing it. He's not going to be like, him. nah, I only did that for you know Rachel, and yeah. he's not that way. Not that way. Yeah. Same God. All right. So let's uh, let's let's keep going. Where we at? Twenty five. So so Rachel finally ha- has a, a child, a son. She calls him Joseph. And I, is that the only is that the only son she had? No, who? Rachel. No, she no. has another she one, has a, but yeah, that's Benjamin. One she, Benjamin cuz she, 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 she died, died during really. childbirth. And, yeah. and you know it's interesting cuz you know when she says give me children unless I die and she yeah, ends yeah. up and there you she go. Ends up dead. Your words. Be careful what you wish for, man. Yeah. Yeah. 25 to what? <clears throat> Let's go. 33. Yeah. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph that Jacob said to Laban, send me away that I may go to my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you and let me go for, you know, my service, which I have done for you. And Laban said to him, please stay. If I have found favor in your eyes, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Then he said, Name me your wages, and I will give it. So Jacob said to him, You know how I have served you, and how your livestock have has been with me. For what you had before I came was little, and it has increased to a great amount. The Lord has blessed you since my coming. And now, when shall I also provide for my own house? So he said, What shall I give you? And Jacob said, You shall not give me anything. If you will do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep your flocks. Let me pass through all your flock today, removing from there all the speckled and spotted sheep and all the brown ones among the lambs and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and these shall be my wages. So my righteousness will answer for me in time to come when the subject of my wages comes before you. Everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the lambs will be considered stolen if it is with me. Go to, go to 36. And Laban said, Oh, that it were according to your word. So he removed that day the male goats that were speckled and spotted, and all the female goats that were speckled and spotted, every one that had some white in it, and all the brown ones among the lambs, and gave them into the hand of his sons. Then he put three days' journey between himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. Mm-hmm. <coughs> I see a different Jacob here, man. Yeah. Yeah, like like Laban Laban attributes the success to Jacob's presence. He's mm-hmm. like, yo, because you're you know, because you're here, you you'll be. I'm being blessed. And he ain't want this dude to leave. Mm-hmm. And the crazy thing about it is when Jacob responds to Laban, he's like, nah, be the Lord. You know, he attri- he gives that glory to God. Mm-hmm. He doesn't like, yeah, it's me and t- yeah, because I'm smart and because I did all nah, he gives that glory to God. So yeah. I'm seeing a transformation in just Jacob and just trusting God. Just like, you know, right. he's like, I don't want no handouts. You know? I I'm not, I don't want no handouts, B. Yeah. But I just need you to do me a favor because he was you know, he was always ready to work. And I think that moment at Jacob's ladder when the Lord was like, He's gonna provide, you went from a dude who went from always trying to scheme and yeah. and 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 manipulate to get your way 
like your way was manipulating and scheming and stealing right and hill grabbing to you know from the first from the first instance even though it was flesh driven you know but you see him not afraid to work you see a man not afraid to work you know what i mean like moving yeah. the rock and then staying with laban you know a month and then oh yeah well, i got to i got i need i don't got no dowry all right i'll work that for 7 right. years so you see but i think it came from just growth of the lord saying that i'm going to provide from you provide for you from that time with jacob's ladder you know he's like you'll be i'm going to provide for you uh yes. that was humbling working for 14 years right. being not in right. control mm mm-hmm. So I, I see that character, and obviously, you know, during that time, you're you're probably praying, you're probably seeking the Lord, you probably needed to lean on, you know, like everything you said. So, yeah. yeah one thing that I see that it, it was is so dope, just even as Christians, is Jacob was blessed by his dad, right? And then Jacob had a personal encounter with the Lord; he had a relationship with Him. Then he goes through two decades of being broken and molded. Mm by the Lord, Mm -hmm. you know, so he became a Christian per se, and it wasn't all roses, you know, like a lot of, you know, Christian theology out there has become a Christian to have a perfect life, Mm -hmm. you know, but no, like God is going to break you Mm -hmm. and he's going to mold you into being a person that he can use for his glory. And it's, he doesn't ever promise us an easy life, right? you know, and I just think that that's awesome to see how, you know, he had an encounter with God, he was blessed, but he still went on you know, to have two decades of, of being molded by God. And Laban's whole reason for him wanting to stay is because I'm benefiting from you staying over here. No, he loved him dearly. <laughs> it was obvious in the scriptures that Laban loved his nephew. And then, and he kissed him earlier, right? He kissed him. <laughs> Showing him love. And, uh, you, you know, and he says that. But you know, that's, that's what's also a great point with this is that... um. Just an application. When he says, uh, the Lord has blessed me for your sake, right? The, uh, can mm. people say that about us, you know, mm. at our jobs? Yep. You know what I'm saying? Or wherever we're at. Can they say that we've been blessed by having this Christian bo- person here at the job? Like, are you doing your your work as it is unto the Lord? You know, one of the biggest things that has blessed me, like one of the, um, that I learned from one of one, uh, my brother, an older brother, he's like, listen. I work for God, but I'm employed by this people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So no matter where you go, you know that you're working for God. So when you know you're working for God, you're giving you all your best. So now everyone will see that, yo, the company is being blessed because we have this person here. Mm-hmm. You know, wow. the integrity, the honesty, the hardworking, you know, that you're not cutting corners. You're doing it right. You're not stealing time. You know, you, I'm going to do this properly. And then, you know, and you'll be rewarded for it. And the people are being rewarded because of you. Mm. Yeah, and I think it's an attitude of just being grateful and know that God is providing. I think that's, yeah. you know, I find it easier for me. You know, there's moments where, you know, you know that you need to tighten up at work, but I find it easier for me to just do my job and even do it well just because you understand it's coming from the Lord, that the right. Lord provides. You know, and I think it's very important just, I think it's when you have a relationship with God and you know that God is with you, I think that's what Jacob understood after Jacob's ladder. When the Lord is like, wherever you go, I'm going to be with you. So it was like, no matter what, whether it was working for Laban for that month, working for 14 years, it didn't matter. He always understood that God was with him to the point where even when Laban was like, listen, I'm going to give you something to stay. He was like, nah, be God is with me. Mm -hmm. You know what? I just need you to do this for me. And he sets up this scenario where right. because he always understood that God was with him and I think he really believed after that encounter at Jacob's ladder it changed him be like it started to transform him like he wasn't there yet but he was being sanctified and we're seeing a moment now where he's totally dependent on God where he's like I don't even want nothing from you I just need a I just need an opportunity yeah that's you know what, what I'm mean? saying I mean I don't want a handout took- like he's like I don't want a handout I need an opportunity and I think about just us as human beings, you know, like, are you always looking for a handout or are you looking for an opportunity? You know, mm. if God is with you, all you need is an opportunity and you're going to make the best of it. But he schemed. Huh? Jacob schemed. What do you mean he schemed? This plot that he did. That's him now getting the upper hand on Laban. Right. Right. So now now he, he comes up with this deal. All right. This is what we're going to do. All the speckled animals, all the animals with stripe, those are going to be yours. And 
any animal that doesn't have stripe is going to be mine. Or is it the other way around? I yeah, don't think he's, he's schemed, yeah? yeah. Nah, yeah, he's schemed. He's schemed. schemed. I mean, he, he still has that He still has that thing in him. I mean... But... Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, yeah you, like, you got to understand, he's being sanctified, he know, listen, but he, he, he understood. He knows what he's going to do. Yeah, he knows what he's So gonna now do. he's setting it up, right? You tricked me. You, you don't think he was trusting in God? For to for those not not how what he did after that. All right, we'll read it and see. Uh, listen, I, I, there I, I, there is I, 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 there is a growth. There is a growth there's a in gro- the maturity. Right, but yeah. he's yeah. still Jacob. He's still Jacob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, so yeah I don't, yes, I don't yes. think he schemed him. You don't no. think he schemed him? No, no, nah. I think there's he trusted it. He, I, I'm he, always. You know what? I I think there's a growth. Definitely a growth. But he's not there yet, B. And of course if you, not. We're if never see, gonna be If you there. see the way he's doing it. But what is he saying? Right, so, let's, let's go what, to what he's saying. What what is he? Ta- what's the deal he made with Laban? Okay, so like for example, okay, okay, the yeah, deal, the deal, the, yeah, the deal yeah, was, yeah. the deal was, yo, all the white sheep, right? All the white lamb or whatever, all the solid colors go to you. Yeah, and and you know what? I'll I'll take the spotted, the speckled, the brown, which are the uncommon ones, less desirable, the less desirable, the uncommon ones, the most common sheep that you get are. The solid colors and especially the white ones. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's 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 the the that deal. The, and then what did Laban do? Now Laban, wh- what he did, he said, "Oh, word! Oh, that sounds great." In fact, he's told his sons, "Yo, go grab all the spotted, the speckled, and the brown, all the undesirables. What mm-hmm. what Jacob wanted, take them away, take them out, right? So take so, them out. So yep. so here here. So La- now remember, Laban's I, I whole. I, I see I see what you're saying. Laban's okay. whole. <laughs> I see but understand. <laughs> Laban's yeah, whole thing will never agree with me, bro. Huh? <laughs> no, no, listen real quick. <laughs> Laban's whole thing is to keep this guy here cuz when you're here, I get blessed. Yeah, he okay. said I learned For from sure. experience this is what it is. So now he's like, you don't have anything. You got four women that you're dealing with. You got a whole bunch of kids. Uh-huh. You're not going to be able to support them if you don't have anything. Uh-huh. So now he's like, all right, if I think you know Jacob, these animals start I think Jacob is gifted, man. If these animals start reproducing uh-huh. and you gain enough riches, you bounce. Then you're good. You're gonna leave. Right. I'm trying to get you to stay. So right. he was like, "Yo, send his son. You'll get all of the speckled and striped animals out. You got a whole bunch of solid animals, so you have nothing." Right. Yeah. And then what did Jacob do? Now I, I don't we think we You know what it is? I think Jacob. Again, I see growth, but I think Jacob is gifted. This is what he do. He know how to. Manipulate. Engineer. He knows how to do. He, yeah, he knows scheme. how to. He knows how to scheme. What do you mean scheme? No, no. I, I went. Into, He's gifted. He, the guy's yeah. a shepherder. So we call him. He a asked no, for stop, stop, specific. Stop, 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 stop. No, let me let me give you an example. The thing is, is like he knows how to. Mm-hmm. Go, ahead. go ahead. I like the Break word. Listen, down. I don't want to use his word because his word uh-uh. is negative. It's a negative <laughs> connotation. But I think Jacob has a good. He has a good. Uh, he has a gift of that. Just. Of what negotiating and just know how to deal like that, and I think, I think his gift is being used positively here. But because but the thing is, is that this is against him. Him saying that I want the speckled is working yeah, against his favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, he says he was trusting in God to yeah. multiply. Was him. it working against his favor? It was. Yeah, it was he right a, there at that. He, deal? No, no. He has a plan. His pl- we're gonna he read about his plan. plan. His he plan does have a trust in yeah. God. Listen, okay. he he framed okay. it in a way where you're gonna accept it, guys. Laban don't want him to leave, right? We so I'm gonna so create a deal Laban's where it seems like it, I'm losing and you're winning. Of course, saying, but, but what he do you mean? Wait, 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 wait. That's you what said I'm saying to yeah. multiply yeah. what he took. Yeah. He was trusting yeah. that God yeah. would multiply. Yeah, that's why. Remember, he just he just said all of Laban's. No, no, no. Sometimes you gotta have action. All of Laban's. You know, you you listen. Yeah, all, right. all of Laban's, you know, goats and everything. He 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 attributed it to God. Yeah. So he knew that God could do the same thing for him. So I don't see him conniving here. I see him saying, "All right, give me what you don't want. Give me the spe- the speckle and the spotted, and then let God take care." Yeah. Of it. Yeah. That's yo, how I see that. Yo, look at that. Look at the verse third three. He says, "So my righteousness will answer for me right. in time to yeah, come yeah. when the subject of my wages mm-hmm. come before you." Yeah, he says everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the ghosts and brown among the lands will be considered stolen. Yeah, if it is with me. Yeah, yeah. so he okay. he lays it out plain. He's like, yo, 
I'm blameless here, B. I'm blameless. Yeah. Dude, this guy's a, you got to watch his okay. words. Nah, he's nah, a nah, nah. All right. <laughs> and, uh, listen, and this is what I'm saying. This this attribute uh, this attribute man. that he listen, this attribute that he has, you got to say he's dealing with a schema. So, I'm not denying that he's like yes. you're laving, dog. You a schema. I'm a schema. I know how to deal, but I don't think this hair was in a negative where he's scheming. Nah, Le- I, Laban. Think so. I think yeah. he's like, yo, dog, I know you a schemer. I know you're going to try to get over on me. You know what? I'm going to take the lesser of the deal, like you said, because I'm, I know how to bargain. I know how to deal. I'm going to take the lesser so that you can take this deal. And I'm still gonna come out because I right. trust God. Exactly. Right. Okay. I'm, right. I'm, pu- I'm putting. I'm playing the odds. The right, so odds are read, against me. So That's let's, what you're saying. Let's read okay. 37. <laughs> to, let's read the rest. I don't like the word scheme over here. <laughs> <laughs> now Jacob took for himself rods of green poplar and of the almond and chestnut trees, peeled white strips in them, and exposed the white which was in the rods. And the rods which he had peeled, he set before the flocks in the gutters in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink, so that they should conceive when they came to drink. So the flocks conceived before the rods, and the flocks brought forth streaked, speckled, spotted. Then Jacob separated the lambs and made the flocks face toward the streaked and all the brown in the flock of Laban. But he put his own flocks by themselves and did not put them with Laban's flock. And it came to pass, whenever the stronger livestock conceived that Jacob placed the rods before the eyes of the livestock in the gutters, that they might conceive among the rods. But when the flocks were feeble, he did not put them in. So the feebler were Laban's and the stronger Jacob's. Thus the man became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks, female and male servants and camels and donkeys. All right. What are y'all thoughts on that? Okay. My thought is that this dude is a skilled shepherder. Yes. And this okay. is a talent that okay. he learned. Okay. Was right he, or wrong. Was he doing that before? What do you mean? Was he doing this the whole time? Well, I don't know. But the whole thing is that he's just multiplying the flock. I would I'm, say no. He this wasn't is not doing a, it the, the whole time. Why so why is he, he doing it now? Why wasn't he doing it bu- before? Huh? Why wasn't he doing it before? He yeah, says we don't that, know that. He says that, yo, dog, you, when you came, you, you prospered me. Oh, yeah, because he, he already got blessed. And that's why I say I understood that the Lord was, of course, the Lord was behind Laban because he says it. He says, he, Laban is like your dog. When you came around, I became the prosper. He's like, nah, that's all the Lord. But I don't, I don't think that him, I think he knew what he was doing, though, dog. He was a shepherd. He was a shepherd his whole life. So I think he understood. And I think the Lord has given us a snapshot of just this guy's understanding of being a shepherd. This is how I'm going to. This is, right. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. He's giving you a more in-depth look. It's just yeah. not. Okay, yeah, he's prosperous. But, dog, this guy know what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what and, I mean? He's actually good at his job. And remember, the whole conversation before he left was that he said, and now when shall I also provide for my own house? He's like, yo, I made you rich. Word. How am I going to provide for my family? Because I don't want you to give me anything. In right. fact, I want to earn my wages honestly. Yeah. So how am I going to earn my wages? I'm going to be a shepherd. That's it. Yeah. Yep. I see it. So, so, and yeah. <laughs> okay. So he w- that's, that's what he was doing for 14 years. That's how Laban increased exactly. in his riches. So now. He's doing it for himself now. Right. But again, it got to this point where. He made this deal, mm. and I think Jacob, this deal that he presented, uh-huh. he always had a plan for it because okay. he understood what Laban would have done. I know you're sneaking. You're gonna take out the spotted. You're gonna separate them and leave me with a whole bunch of solid colors. And obviously, right? If you're looking at genetics, if solid, they're gonna produce solid, you know, babies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how it works. Mm-hmm. But obviously, this guy was intelligent enough and understood some type of genetic scheme. I, I don't know what he did. But whatever he did was able to produce stripe, and Spider. they were stronger than the solid ones. The solid ones came out feeble. That wasn't happening before. Why wasn't it happening before? How you know no. it wasn't happening before? Because no. Laban was getting rich, and he increased. Okay. So now it specifies that now the strong ones were were streaked, and then the weak ones were for Laban. He engineered this. He engineered it. So you say he made them weak? 
No, I'm saying he, whatever he engineered, whatever he did, this was the result of it. So my, my question engineer? my question is, uh -huh. was that happening before? Was he doing this scheme before? Okay, the thing is that that whole scheme, that was just, that's nothing. Because there's no way you could change genetics yeah. by having them look at rods. Because all he said is that he put rods in front of them. So, and how, at so them. why was the result that? You think it was? Uh, that was God. The, okay, number one, it was God. Number two is that. Even though you put two solids together, even though you put two solids, there's still a recessive gene. You still have a dominant recessive. It's just that, yo, even though you have a solid, they still have the recessive gene to have streak or spotted. So, you so they still could develop so that. So you're telling so me- by the work of God. Because he did that, right? Whatever he did- Nothing. Let me ask you a question. Uh -huh. What if he did nothing? What if he didn't, he didn't do anything? What if he continued to do what he was doing? Could the Lord have made solid and streak? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So and, and why did he do that? That's the question I'm asking. Why did he do that, and what was it? He and thought he was doing something. He thought he was doing something, but it could have just been him just symbolizing I, something I to know. God. I why know. he couldn't have been doing something? Why couldn't? He, I'm gonna tell you something. Because it points it out. It points it out, what? and it's very specific. What? That he, whatever this is, yeah. him bringing them to a certain place right. when they're mating, they're mating in front right. of this. Why? Right. Right. Well, well, that's the things that he knew. Well. That's the shepherding where he knew that he could okay, get them but to was mate. He do, was he but doing that, that for 14 years? What, I don't know. If he was we, doing we, that we this whole... We don't know. No, The reason I say no uh -huh. is because it's specified. Okay. Over here. And even yeah. if he wasn't doing it, okay, what's, so the, how, what's the issue with but that? How do you know that this wasn't from the Lord? Like, how do, don't you know that? Because the thing is, right. because the thing is before he... The way he does say that. No, but that's meaning I don't see the Lord coming to him. He trusted and God, though. Him. That's what but, he says. He's like, Yo, B, the Lord said he's the gonna, one, right? He put a multiply in the He's equation. like your fam. And that's why I'm telling you, he's starting to, uh, from when he was in Jacob's ladder, where the Lord is like, Yo, B, I'm gonna provide for you. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. Whatever this is, I'm not, I don't understand, no. but I, but I trust that what he was doing, dog, he was in a, the sense like how. Ralph was saying, "Yo, dog, I want to be blameless. You know what? We're gonna do it like this. You're gonna take this deal, okay, I, and the no, Lord is gonna bless with, it." I agree with you. I agree that he's maturing and he's growing in the Lord. Right. But this is still Jacob being Jacob and engineering something, and the Lord is gonna bless it because you know why? The Lord wants you to get out of there and go back to your land. I so that. I understand that the right. Lord is using it, I but that. I still see this is Jacob. Being I said Jacob. that. That's what I said. That's why I'm like, I don't want to use the word scheme mm -hmm. because scheme gives it a negative. Connotation. connotation i'm like yo this guy is skilled he's a skilled shepherd and not only he's a skilled shepherd he know who he's dealing with so it's like a situation like dog i already know how you are you know what i'll take the i'll take the weak i'll take the less i'm gonna put it in a situation where you look like you coming up off the deal and yeah. i trust the lord so i think yeah i do think jacob is using his character i think he's using his his um his knowledge of of being a shepherd you seeing the Lord is using who he is. Yeah. And that's why I said, I don't, I, the word scheme is like, the use okay, China. do you, do you, uh, do you believe that this was Jacob working? Working how? What Meaning you mean? his, his strength. This was his strength. Yeah. Nah. Yes, yes, no. I do. Okay. I don't believe that. I mean, yeah. I no, believe I, it was, I believe this guy is gifted on how to deal with you people. You can't be it's gifted, gifted enough to, to, to switch genetics. You can't be. Right. Does it, that that was all right. God here. No, God I, controlled right. I'm what not, color yeah. I'm not sheep talking about that. Born. I'm right. not talking exactly. about that. Yeah. I'm talking about as far as yes, he did trust God, but he there was some information that he had yeah. that he was able to do. Because your dog, like like Marcus said, dog, for you to point this out, dog, you had some kind of information. Well, and the, I believe it came from God. Well, the, the, I the, do the, too. Yeah, so, that, that's the thing. That I think what he did was stimulate the productivity of them mating. I agree. The heating. That's what he did. With he the, put with it, the he tree, put, with the pearl, right. with the he pearl. Puts it, pearl. He put them in a position where you will mate more mm -hmm. and you're gonna be the animal's gonna be in heat so that they could be productive. I agree. So now this was his talent of being a shepherd, a skilled shepherd to know how to multiply. Right. But the whole thing is that it was God that uh, that caused them to be more exactly things. the colors that, that came out had right. to do from God. No, I agree. I agree. And that's how his it. riches were multiplied. Yeah, and as he was doing witchcraft, which he was. Yeah, which, you <laughs> listen, know what I'm I agree. I agree. God was behind it, but I agree that God used we, 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 who Jacob is. Yeah, 
It was and, you know and you know what's so awesome That's too why I is, said I don't like the word scheme. Re- remember dude. when, when this guy a- is good. He's a yaikwa, but dog. Remember when name. Abraham <laughs> wouldn't take anything from these other kings because he didn't want anyone to say. That's what I'm saying too. That that's a good point. anyone that made too. him rich, but God. Right. And I think we're seeing the same thing here I with with, with Jay. That's why I see I see this as him trusting God yes. to multiply the little that he took from Laban. Yes. Mm, I got I gotta go. I gotta go into it more. Cause oh. there's something there. That's a good. No, that's what. Yeah. There's no, something there. No, what I'm trying to show you is exactly what, exactly what I was saying is that's what you're saying. Like God points that out for a reason. I think the information to even do all of this was mm. from God, because it's specified that you did this, you did that. We yeah, might not yeah. understand it. Right. Like to us, we're like your genetics. We will get all into deep into it. But I think, dog, you had some kind of information. However, you got it, but you understood that when I do this, the Lord is gonna bless it. But it was for but you had to do something. You know, it's like when God uses you, God is like, yo, B, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, he leaves a part up to you. And I All think right. this was Jacob's part for me. <laughs> All right, don't worry about it. When we read on, you'll see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, when you read on, you'll see. It's tricky. It's I'm tricky. telling you, when you read on, you'll see, dog. This came from God, we, B. We, we, we. But touch, Jacob was. Touch, but I, I gotta meditate on that. But one I think I think like I said, I, from when I first said, "Yo, dog," I think Jacob just had this. He knew his he knew his uncle was a schemer. That's why he was like, "I gotta strike a kind of deal like that." Because if I don't, if I strike a deal where you feel like you're losing, you ain't gonna take it. Right. So he under Jacob being a deal maker understood that. Mm-hmm. Like yo, B, I have to make it look like you're getting the best out of the deal. Right. But that result that. That takes you having faith in God, right. B. Yeah. Because he put I mean? himself in the short end of the set. Yeah, you got, got the short end of the set. But right. you had some kind of information to do all of this because this is crazy. Yeah. Because I read this like 90 times. And I'm like, yeah, it's confusing. it don't make no sense. Yeah. But I'm like, you for you to do this, you had, God gave you something. That's what God I gave believe. you some kind of information. I, I, I don't know if it's from God. I believe but it is. I believe it's, it's some information or some skill or something that he did. That caused you think it's manipulation, a, a man. Controlled results. Every time science advances, it's from God. <laughs> you know, like the wisdom that God gives us as human beings, He gets all the credit, man. Mm. Yeah, that's not what the scientists say. Of you course know, not, you, but I don't care what they say. The scientists is Romans one B. They don't want to <laughs> give glory to the Creator. Yeah, now nah, we understand the Creator, but the yeah. individuals, right? So the individuals could be like, nah, I, I figured yeah, this out. Exactly. I did the testing and it came. And you know what's the weird thing is that they actually, um, some scientists used to use this as proof positive that um, that the scriptures were not real. Because they took this verse actually and they said that um, he, that Jacob, Money. Jacob was doing uh, prenatal influencing. That's one of the things in science that's saying that's not true. Where You know, like if a woman wants to have a son. They have her like keep looking at pictures of little boys and all these things. Oh, this was some okay. uh, ancient type of practice back in the days. Like, so they called it prenatal influence. Like, if you're a child with blue eyes, keep looking at pictures of children with blue eyes. Mm. So, which was false science. So then, so some scientists were saying Maybe that that's this, witchcraft. Be if yeah. you see it, you believe it. If you think <laughs> right, it, you it, shall be it. It's that new world, new new new, new age, new age. Yeah, new yeah, age. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, that's madness. and they try to use this. As the, and it, it was just yo, know, I think he understood gene- Well, he didn't understand it, but he was doing genetic Men- Mendelian genetics. Oh. You know, understanding yo, know, there's a dominant gene, there's a recessive gene, and he just trusted in God. Yeah, he didn't just put to, this in the uni- He didn't just put this in the universe right. and it came back to him. Nah, he trusted God. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. Yep. Alrighty. That was good, man. Right, we got, we got, we got, we got visit this next week. You gonna be? Don't right. worry about it. You gonna be totally wrong, and you gonna be like, yo. Uh, don't worry about it. it always happens, though. You're so I'm wrong. always wrong. That's it. Man. It makes it makes the nah, podcast. Nah, nah, a nah. I'm, I'm always wrong. I'm always wrong. <laughs> ah, this guy. Yo, somebody want to <laughs> pray, or what? What are we waiting for? You pray. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> That's it. Peace. <laughs>